Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. Glory be to the Lord for giving us this very moment and for allowing us, for making us worthy of mentioning his name in front of the ark. Your face has made you well. Your face has made you well. We find this powerful word of God from the part of the gospel that was just raised by the priest. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 17, verses 19. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 17, has several huge themes that we're not able to finish discussing within the 15 or 20 minutes that we have. But we focus on this part, on the curing of the ten lepers, that we're crying for the mercy of the Lord. In the Gospel, earlier, in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 9, verses 51, our Lord has moved the focus of his ministry south from Galil, and he was moving closer and closer to Jerusalem because the days of the crucifixion was coming. And he was traveling the border area, the south extremity of the province of Galil, where at the north end it is bordering the Samaritans. The Samaritans back then, they were considered as sort of Gentiles by the Jews. They were not considered as, you know, good practicing Jews. Leprosy, whatever it was and whatever it was thought of back then, was considered not only just a bodily disease, but it was considered as a disfavor from God, as a punishment from God. So anybody who is suffering from this sickness was not allowed to come close to people, was isolated, let alone come to the worshiping place. That's why in the book of Levi, chapter 13, verses 45, we find the word of God saying, the person with such an infectious disease must wear torn clothes, let his hair be unkept, cover the lower part of his face, and cry out, unclean, unclean. As long as he has the infection, he remains unclean. He must live alone. He must live outside the camp. That was the reason why when our Lord came to the area where these ten lepers were, there was a distance between them. And that's why the gospel tells us they cried out saying, have mercy upon us. They didn't even say, cure us from our leprosy. They just said, have mercy upon us. And the loathing directed at the lepers, like I said, was not merely of, because of the bodily disease or the transmission of it, but it was a sign that the Jews believed, a sign of you know, wrath of God happening on whoever is affected with this disease. In all biblical history, before the coming of our Lord, before this innocence, only two people were cured from leprosy. The one was Miriam, Moses' sister, and the other one was an Amman. And 700 years later, our Lord comes to cure these ten lepers, which is again seen as an earmark of the Messianic age that the Gospel of Luke was telling us to note down. They stood afar off, knowing that by the law, their disease obliged them to keep their distance. The key thing here is, today, we're affected with spiritual leprosy. Back then, it was of bodily leprosy. Anybody who is affected of bodily leprosy now is allowed to come in to the house of God or mingle with people. Glory be to the word of God and the blood that is shed for us. But the most important thing is, what are the leprosy, spiritual leprosy that we are facing? Spiritual leprosy are things that our Lord really, really hates to see in us. Spiritual leprosy are things that our Lord clearly told us that He loathes to see amongst us as Christians. What are these things that our Lord really despises 
and are considered as lip, spiritual leprosy. Solomon, in his Proverbs chapter 6, he tells us what these things are. There are seven things. The first one is holy eyes. Holy eyes deals with pride, and God hates pride. The eyes are the windows, of, the windows into pride. The phrase, that person looks down on me, that holy eye looks down on me, is one of the greatest things that our Lord really despises. Pride is the original scene that goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden. Man wanted to be like God instead of to be with God. And that was the source of pride. That was the, the beginning of the holy eyes. So we got to ask ourselves, do I, do I have holy eyes when I, you know, live with my brother, when I live with my sisters, when I do at workplace, wherever I am? Holy eyes. That's one of the spiritual leprosy that we should ask our Lord to cure us from. The second spiritual leprosy is a lying tongue. A lying tongue is a reminder that all words count. All words have consequences and that all our words will be judged by God. That's why in Proverbs 18:21 it says, Life and death are in the power of the tongue. How many of us are really, really careful and thoughtful enough when we open our mouths and talk to the next person next to us? Whether Christians or Gentiles or anybody for that matter. If a person, as we know, is created in the image and likeness of God, right? And how are we, what good words come out of our, ma, our, our, like our thang and our hearts to heal the person that is next to us? Are we intentionally spreading lies? Are we intentionally hurting people, hurting their feelings, or are we calculative in our heads and whatever comes out of our mouth is of not good nature? That's what is called lying tank. And as Christians, again, we have to ask our Lord to cure us from having a lying tank and always strive to tell the truth. The third spiritual leprosy is hands that shade innocent blood. Unfortunately, in the world we live in, killing people, killing our brothers and sisters has become a symbol of power or some kind of power of resistance that is kind of glorified or politicized. But in the eyes of God, shedding the blood of the innocent is a spiritual leprosy. We should ask for forgiveness if we in any way take part in this kind of activity or we should pray also for those who are you know shedding the bloods of the innocent wherever back home here in any part of the world the fourth spiritual leprosy is a hurt that devises wicked schemes throughout scripture god reminds that he alone searched the hurt all of us today, we're standing in front of the ark, mentioning his name, mentioning his mother's name, mentioning the names of the angels, but all that is due to the grace of God. He only sees what is inside each and every one's hearts, what we think, what we truly think. Again, unfortunately, pretense has become part and parcel of us, of our daily lives, that we, again, pretend when we are in front of God. So that is one of spiritual leprosy that we all should refrain from and ask the Lord to have mercy upon us to take this spiritual leprosy away from us the same way he did for the ten lep lepers. The fifth spiritual leprosy is feet that are quick to rush into evil. To rush into evil is to demonstrate a great delight and enjoyment of evil 
and an eagerness to participate in it. God hates the enjoyment, the so-called peace that comes out of any evil activity. Some of our friends, we are, we are really blessed to be in the house of God at this very moment. Some of them could be spending the night elsewhere, right? Doing whatever, seeking peace, seeking enjoyment out of whatever that evil thing or evil doing is, which is ungodly thing. So we should always strive to come to the house of God to learn the words of God, to kneel down and pray and ask for the grace of the Lord to be with us instead of seeking for enjoyment and happiness and so-called peace that is derived from the world and anything that is in it. The sixth spiritual leprosy is a false witness who pours out lies. This deals with perjury, and it tells us that the word confession is a word that goes always, false confession that goes with a lying tag. How many of us do really confess of the things that we say untruthfully, intentionally or unintentionally? We can, we can gauge ourselves in a day, how many lies have I like, spoken? Or have, how many lies have I engaged myself in? Or how many lies have I participated in? It might look silly, but if we try to track ourselves within the, a single hour, you'll be amazed the kind of things we say untruthfully, which is basically lying. Lying has no degree. Some people say, there's a saying in our culture as well, uh, sometimes you have to lie, it's good to lie, you know, to put something together or to make people, to make peace. But it doesn't work in the house of God. A lying tongue is a lying tongue. And it's one of uh, spiritual leprosies that our Lord really despises, and we should ask forgiveness or mercy from the Lord. The last but not the least, spiritual leprosy is a person who stirs up conflict in the community. This is one of the most, uh, what would I say, um, amongst the seven spiritual leprosy that our Lord really despises together with holy eyes. We are really blessed to have peace in our congregation today, but God forbid if we have those who kind of, you know, spread evil or conflict amongst brothers and amongst sisters, especially in the house of God, that's one of the most really, really, um, what can I say, the most disgusting thing in the eyes of God. So we have to make it our practice to be good, not to be part of creating conflict, not only in the house of God, in our workplaces, in our families, in our marriage, in our friendships, wherever we are. We should be asking the Lord if we have these kinds of temptations, we should ask the Lord to give us and to be merciful upon us and to cure us from these spiritual leprosies. There is one important thing, as we read in the gospel, that Christ did to the ten lepers. He told them, go and see the priest. Why did God say, go and see the priest? As he later said in the writings, in the scriptures, he has said he has come to fulfill what is in the Old Testament, not oppose it. So by so doing, by telling the lepers to go see the priest, he was fulfilling the law that was at the time. At the same time, as they were going to the priest, the lepers were clean. It's amazing. Our Lord had six designs of thoughts 
when he ordered the lepers to go see the priest. The first one was the priest's judgment of the cure, because the rabbis, the scribes, and the Pharisees back then, they were doubtful of him. There was no power, like I said, it has been 700 years since an Amman and Maryam were healed of leprosy, that is able to cure the leper and raise the date. So the scribes were looking back and seeing who is this person with this power. So he was capturing their judgment of the cure. The second was the priest's testimony to the cure. They were very conniving in trying to persecute the Lord. That was why he was going, like I said, from Galil, and the next stop would be Jerusalem. It was near the time of his taste. So he was also making them be a testimony to the cure. The third was the perfectness of the cure. It was not that the lepers were healed today and the leprosy sickness will come to them maybe tomorrow or a week later. It was absolute cure. The fourth message was to awaken the priests. If they have a chance to accept the Lord, that he is truly the God of Moses, that he is truly the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of their forefathers, and that he is truly the Son of God. And the last point for him was to awaken those who were witnessing this also. Because there was a multitude of people following him and, you know, capturing whatever he does back then. So I'll try to make it uh, short, considering the time that we have. And may the Lord of hosts, the King of glory, the King of kings, our Savior, our hope in life and death, Jesus Christ, may he cure all the spiritual leprosies that we may have, that we do have, that we may not know that we have, so that we be worthy of him to stand in front of his holy ark. Glory be to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen.